There is a community here who are genuinely being terrorised by this kind of behaviour on a regular basis. Yeah, and I think we need to start off by saying we have condemned it as public reps in the area and the community have openly come out today and condemned it as well. Um, this has been happening for a long time now. We've seen a peak in it this time last year and it's actually that time that as a part, across party we met with senior managements within DCC. At that particular time there was an incident where one of the councillors from Sinn Féin were attacked and... Um, we raised he specifically his, targeted in that instance? He was up uh, witnessing what was happening. It wasn't at this um, piece where it was last night, but it was down the road and um, they were targeting an outside homes, new homes that had been built. And then when they were rallying the cars, per se, they were down abandoning the car outside of this particular home where the bollards were and burning it. And residents had been on and saying that uh, that they couldn't take it anymore. It was intimidation. There is a high level of intimidation there. We can't deny that fact. Um, and we have been raising this and we've been saying for some time we could see this happening. Unfortunately, we they, like I know there's talk about this is a um, decades long issue. I mean, it's not the first time it's happened. Um, and there has been videos of Snapchats and stuff being shared for a very long time now. And um, we only had the Minister for Children out, Roderick O'Gorman, there on Thursday. And he was uh, brought back up. He was a visit Monday Youth Services. And he was brought up to this particular area and he was shown the evidence, which had a day before, at three or four in the day, there had been a, a car we're presuming was robbed. So know. if this is now has now has drawn more attention to this, but this is actually more widespread than a lot of people might realise, mm -hmm. is there a chance that this might actually be the prompt that, that results in a long-term fix or might it just be more people looking at your community, looking down on it, and then things could get even worse? Well, this is going to probably have both effects, unfortunately. Um, but I think we have worked with the organisations and we have put proposals forward to say how we should tackle this. And evidence-based within the area has said, if we do outreach work, we go out and work with these particular individuals, ask what exactly exactly is going on, how we can integrate them into the community. I mean, it's, um, it's a piece that takes a particular type of approach, let's say, and we're looking to kind of support the services in doing that because when it does come down to a guard or resource issue, it then has already become, become a criminal issue. And what are we going to do then? We can't keep kind of pushing people into that way. We should be trying to get to it before it gets to that level. You say guard or resource issue, but yours is a community which, for better or worse, is, is known as having issues of this sort. And as you say, this is, is relatively commonplace. One would think that your community has already gotten maybe a disproportionate level of resources to try and deal with this problem, and it's not getting any better. So what would more resources do differently to those you already have? Yeah, and, I, and that is the perception. Um, but I suppose there's services there. We have got many services. It's, it's the resourcing of those services. So those services are fighting for every penny that they have. And they were never really restored to the fully, full budget that they have. And they will tell you themselves, if you're out there, like with the Equine Centre, the Orchard Centre, we have um, the St. Dalton's. Like there's really good services out there. There's Garda Youth Diversion Programmes, Family Base. Mm. And they will tell you from evidence-based that they need more outreach workers. It's the outreach piece that it seems to be the that will work, that has benefited and that they can explain and show the results. Is that a lot of our issue then, Hazel, that you have a situation where there are more and more policing resources but you're actually not dealing with the root causes and there's a lot of, of cure but no prevention? Yeah, and John has actually made a very good point there and, and that's what we're seeing. You know, I grew up in Cherry Orchard and from it I, I grew up witnessing this and that was our daily life. And I think it's a case of you want to break the back of it. And today we had kids going into the school because this happened outside of a primary school and had to witness the cars being removed and Dublin City Council being out and marks on the road and stuff. And people, genuine people from Cherry Orchard and are just trying to rear their kids, go to work, do a daily life, you know, like ourselves, like everybody that wants to get on in society. And constantly having to live and relive in this cycle. We need funding that's available. Like, even when the minister was out, he said the target that that's needed is a very bespoke approach because it's not the same for every area. It is a particular area that obviously, as you've said, has this recurrence over and over again. And is there a danger then for, for a community like yours? I don't want to talk up the idea that this might be inevitable, but the public order unit have been stood up there for the, this evening and we've already been talking about how this is more commonplace than the videos might mm. let on. Is there a danger that the community ends up even feeling more marginalised because you can't just be policed by rank and file members in a standard Garda car, that you need to have the public order unit on yeah, the well, we've, we've had that. We'll have that for Halloween. We'll have that for every Halloween. You know, be, and it, it, unfortunately, I mean, when you see, um, you know, Garda and riot police or whatever are standing back ready to kind of come in, and it's not the first time. And I hope to say it's the last time, but maybe it won't be if we do not get that annual fund and that people can put in place. It's not going to be fixed today. It's not going to be fixed tomorrow. It needs a long-term approach, and that's the problem.